Just got that state of play with a brand new look at Ratchet and Clank coming June 11th. Looks awesome. Watch the footage in 4K, by the way, if you haven't already. Returnal, of course, just came out. And May is going to be huge with Resident Evil 8, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and the game that I'm looking forward to the most, Biomutant on May 25th. But what happens after that? Like we're currently lacking dates for already announced games and there are also a ton of secret games that are still coming out this year that have not been announced yet or that we just haven't seen a lot of. But that should be out before the end of the year. So let's go over these secret titles and why we will likely see them announced or fully revealed very soon. Thanks for tuning in to the Sunday Your Game Show where every Sunday we of course discuss the recent gaming trends here on the channel. I will of course also answer one of your questions at the end of the video. So a like would really help me out and let's go. Not sure if you already saw the Battlefield social media change. Like they're getting ready for a reveal soon as the pinned tweet also mentions with more studios than ever working on this new game. The last rumors we got talk about a day and night cycle and dynamic weather with a desert island transformed by a tornado. And earlier we learned that the game could host maps for 128 players in one match. And you're now seeing Battlefield 5 footage right here. And that game of course underperformed compared to previous titles. And EA blamed the marketing and development delay for those lower sales. Last year in June they released the final expansion for that game and it is by the way going to be free on PS Plus in May like they're really preparing a big Battlefield comeback. And what is interesting is that EA has their big financial meeting on May 11th as we see in this awesome list from Dom on Twitter and a link to that in the video description. So I think we get the announcement in this coming week already so they can then talk about it to investors a few days after that. That's normally how it goes. And the game should be out somewhere during the holiday period. So yeah, the always exciting Call of Duty versus Battlefield War is going to happen again this year. Don't worry, I will move on to other games in a moment here. But there is something interesting going on with this year's Call of Duty. It is namely a potential disaster. Like in such a bad shape that they might cancel it and are going to release a Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer remaster instead. And people reporting these rumors are getting DMC takedowns from Activision. And why do that if the rumors are not real? So it might be true then, although again nothing is confirmed yet. But if that's the case then that should be good news for EA to bring more people to Battlefield. Like, even if you don't play these games, I think it will always be an interesting competition to follow. Going back to that investor meeting list from Dom, because we see Ubisoft here too, Monday, May 10th. So I totally think we are getting some sort of announcement or tease for upcoming things before that point. And sure, it could only be that Rainbow Six Siege announcement. They are now hyping for May 4th. People are speculating that it might be hinting at a proper quarantine or parasite reveal. But it could also just be a new game mode in Siege. Next to that, a Rainbow Six co-op zombie game. Ubisoft, of course, also has Far Cry 6 coming this year at some point. It's still slated for before October 2021 right now. But we will likely get an update during the financial meeting, if I had to guess. Skull and Bones should see a proper reveal this summer and might even launch this year, although early 2022 if anything is more likely and it seems that ubisoft also still has some secrets up their sleeves because this week on the microsoft store a brand new test for something codenamed incursion showed up on the xbox they then changed it to vmc removing the incursion name and now the whole listing is gone from the store and vmc is by the way a company you can hire to do external tests for unannounced projects so i was still able to make some screen captures of the listing and especially the capabilities part is interesting saying that it's for two to 102 players online so it sounds like another Battle Royale game. Like if we look at the listing for Hyperscape, it says 10 to 100 players online, which is correct. But after that game flopping real hard, it's weird that they will try it again with another title. We only had Shooter for Incursion in terms of genre and Incursion was something Division related. Like I could see Ubisoft do maybe a free to play Division spin-off since a real big third game does seem to be in the cards with that team already working on Star Wars and the Avatar project. So yes, this Incursion thing 
might be something we see soon. And of course, the Squeed stuff will be coming as well, although this year it will likely be the two big season pass expansions, some free content, and then next year another new, even bigger Valhalla expansion, if the recent rumors are to be believed. And maybe we already see something at the Ubisoft Ford event in June. I will of course keep an eye out and also listen to that financial meeting and report back when we know more. A big game that will likely be at E3 this year is Dying Light 2. It was actually at the Xbox show a couple of times, so I would not be surprised if it showed up there again. Recently we actually got a small bit of new footage with Techland assuring us that the game is coming out this year. And we actually had a leak on Reddit the other day that stated that the game is targeting a September release date and then we get an announcement at E3 with a story trailer which was leaked online a few months ago. So whether that is real or not, I still think it would be smart to show the game again at E3 and then launch it a few months later. September 24th is a Friday, that's like the hinted release date in this leak here could see it happen. And of course that Microsoft E3 show should be pretty big with hopefully updates on Fable and Perfect Dark, but those titles are still pretty far away. Now rumors actually suggest that we will get a new Forza Horizon game this year. And that's actually not that weird looking at the fact that we had one every two years until Forza Horizon 4 which launched in 2018. This new one should be set in Mexico and release at the end of this year, so three years after Horizon 4. Makes sense, likely meaning that a regular Forza Motorsport game has been pushed once again, but Horizon is more popular at this point, so it does make sense. Halo will then likely come in November, so there will also be a big focus from Microsoft, but they of course now have Bethesda for the first time this year as well, who will likely do their own show. And I will have my E3 predictions in a future video for all the big parties. But in regards to secret games that could still launch this year, Starfield is of course a big one. We already have Deathloop from Bethesda, which was delayed again recently to September 14th. Ghostwire Tokyo was like planned for October according to a recent Sony video. So that already seems like a lot from Bethesda. Can Starfield be ready too? That would of course be huge. Jess from Windows Central who usually has some inside Microsoft knowledge tweeted this. Where we see Forza Horizon 5 in Mexico, Starfield and also Halo Infinite next to each other. And then we see some dots maybe indicating that we go to a new year and there we see like an icon we still don't really know what that is but the icon after that, the dragon seems to hint at a potential fantasy game by the Hitman creators IO. Like this should be a Microsoft exclusive sounds pretty wild. Um, but yeah, that is still far away. The point is Starfield like being mentioned next to Forza and Halo could mean it's launching this year. Fallout 4 launched in 2015 and that was like the legit final game from Bethesda Game Studios. 76 I think was mostly made by a separate team so they have been working on it for a while. Would be really huge to have Halo and Starfield this year. Like that would be amazing but I don't see it happen but maybe this summer this E3 will prove me otherwise. So Sony of course wants to counter that and Horizon Forbidden West is one game that will do that. But they also seem pretty confident that they have more big titles coming very soon. This was namely from their recent financials where they expect software sales to drop year on year during the first quarter that will end on June 30th. But the company predicts that they will go back to matching last year's performance from the second quarter onwards. So they expect to sell as many first party games from July until March 2022 compared to last year. And Jeff Grubb on Gamesbeat made a list with games Sony launched last year. So they expect to match this, which is quite big, meaning that next to Horizon and maybe God of War in early 2022, I still find that hard to believe, but it is possible, like they expect to launch more. Some big hits that we don't know about yet, and the The Last of Us remake could totally be that. We of course know that Naughty Dog is working on that, and one of the reasons is actually because they have many things still in pre-production, so it was something for the team to do, 
while other smaller teams are working on like new ideas and it also helps them get familiar with the ps5 so maybe a bundle with part 2 and the remake is something we see soon maybe we see that potential second project from guerrilla games they are working on for quite a while now but i'm also like not really sure what else they got for an imminent release because big titles like ghost of tsushima 2 are likely still far away. So I totally expect Sony's E3 style show to have some interesting surprises. And Elder Ring could of course also be one of those secret games. Like I totally expect it at E3. We actually just learned that it's still slated for a release before April 2022. So it could still launch this year. Although I think an early 2022 release window is more likely kind of like Sekiro. But yeah, we're also still in that period where everything is getting delayed. So maybe some things that are planned for 2021 will be pushed to 2022. On the other hand, a ton of things that were planned for last year that did not happen will likely happen now this year. And one of the big things is Saints Row 5. They were going to unveil it in 2020. Then in April 2020, they said, hey, we're still working on it, but we still haven't seen the game. So I totally think we will see that here. Ages of Mayhem was their previous game and that launched in 2017. So four years later, a new Saints Row, I totally think it's possible. And Dead Island 2 is another one of those games. Yeah, it's still being worked on, believe it or not. It's actually planned for before April 2022. So high chance that we might actually see it at E3 and that we might actually see it this year or a little later. Personally, I'm really curious about the new IP from Hangar 13, so the Mafia 3 creators. That game came out in 2016, and ever since then we have been knowing about this like new IP. Then in 2020 they said we will announce it in the coming months. COVID happened, so we never saw the game. Would not be surprised with Take 2 being at E3 that that is what they will reveal there. Can't really think of another game. Rockstar is usually not really there, so we have some rumors about it actually, new IP, fancy sci-fi world, open world game, third person with online elements as well. I'm just like always open for something new, I think this studio is pretty cool, so I'm really curious what that will be. Again, more E3 predictions will be coming in a future Sunday video. I'm actually really excited because a ton of companies will be attending and then Sony will likely have a show a little later. So. It's going to be really, really cool. I can't wait. Let me know your predictions maybe already in the comments down below or what games you want to see in 2021 and beyond. You can, of course, also leave a question in the comments that I might answer in the next Sunday video. And I now want to talk about this question from Matteo. Can you do a video on what the future of Marvel video games is? And that's actually a good one because I really think for the first time since we had like the Avengers project announced where Marvel games was going to different studios to make Marvel games instead of like making them themselves. That of course the weird Activision Spider-Man deal. Like this is the first time that we don't know what the next big Marvel game will be. Which is kind of interesting. Like we of course just had Miles Morales. I don't think we get like Spidey PS5. I don't think that will be announced anytime soon. So Spider-Man 2. And Marvel's Avengers is just chucking along. Of course, we have the Black Panther DLC, which looks awesome at the end of this year. But apart from that, not much else. We, of course, in 2017 had huge rumors that Idols Montreal was working on a Guardians of the Galaxy project. So that was like four years ago already. Maybe it's finally time to unveil that. That would be cool. There are some other rumors about Netherrealm maybe doing a Marvel fighting game instead of like the DC fighting game. They of course usually do Injustice. So might dive more into that in a future video. That's actually a really good idea. So thanks for sharing that. And yeah, you can also let me know if you got more Sunday video ideas. I'm all ear actually. So you can also leave that in the comments. Subscribe for these big Sunday videos. Of course, updates on your favorite games and way, way more. A like on the video would really help me out. And totally check out our previous video on Ubisoft's E3 2021 show. What I think will happen. You can watch that one by clicking on the screen. For now, I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.